Okay, so we are in Statistical Rethinking, second edition, uh, chapter 12. We're on the last easy question, uh, which is 12E4. Okay, uh, so here's the question right here. Um, so, Over's version is common in count data. Give an example of a natural process that might produce overproduced counts. Can you give an example of a process that might produce under dispersed counts? Okay. Um, so, as far as over dispersed data, uh, I can think of a couple of ways that this might happen. And the first one we've already seen, uh, at, at least a version of, in 12E3, where we were looking at zero inflated data. And that is where our outcome is actually the product of more than one process, maybe even more than one Poisson process. Okay. So, um, so uh, let's actually look at that here. So, uh, so I have a variable that I'm calling over dual because we're looking at a dual process. And it starts by randomly assigning a zero or a one with 50% probability. Okay. If, and if we're going to call that RV for random value. And if RV is zero, then we're going to create a Poisson uh, value uh, from a distribution with lambda eight. So the mean should be eight and the variance should be eight in that case. Okay. But uh, if the RV equals one or else, okay, then we're instead going to assign a Poisson value where the lambda is four. And remember, for Poisson distributions, the mean and the variance are equal to lambda. Um, and then, uh, well, I guess this won't actually uh, make much of a difference here, so I'll just cross that out here. Um, but anyway, so we're going to run that. We're going to look at the mean and the variance. And like I said, the mean and the variance should be equal for a Poisson distribution. And we're going to see that the variance is actually quite a bit larger than the mean here, meaning we have over-dispersed data if, you know, if we're modeling as a Poisson. It's over-dispersed relative to a Poisson. Okay. So, um, so that's the first way I can think of creating over-dispersed data. The second way is if we have autocorrelation among observations, okay? Now, if our observations are autocorrelated, in other words, this observation is somehow correlated with the next observation and so on and so forth, that's actually a violation of, you know, uh, of most of our GLMs. But it can arise. Uh, we have ways of taking care of it, and we'll see that later, but that's kind of irrelevant to this video here. But if there's autocorrelation in the variable or in the observations, then, uh, and, and we're not aware of it, then we might mistakenly model it as being independent observations. And this can also give rise to over dispersion. So we're going to see that. So, uh, so we're going to have um, a over, a, a, an over dispersed model where the uh, consecutive variables are positively correlated as well as negatively correlated. Okay, so we'll, we'll have two instances of this. Uh, and then again, eh, I'm just going to block these out because they don't matter because I'm not going to plot them. The plots are a little bit hard to interpret. But um, So we're going to run this. So we're going to get two variables, one that has positive correlation, one that has negative correlation. Okay, um, And we're going to look at the mean and the variance of both of those. Okay, um, Let me just run through this for loop here. Okay, So you see how the positive and negative correlation is being produced. So first, on both of them, for, for both variables, we're just going to, the first observation is just going to be a Poisson distribution with a mu or a mean mu, where I'm setting mu to six here. Okay. Now for the positive correlations, if the previous observation was greater than or greater than or equal to mu, then I am, then the, the next observation is going to be uh, grabbed from a Poisson distribution um, with a mean of mu plus some deviation, two in this case. In this case. Okay. But if uh, we get a, if, if the previous observation was less than mu, then we go mu minus the deviation, minus two. Okay. So this will produce a positive correlation among observations. Um, conversely, for the negative correlation, if the previous observation is greater than mu, well, then the next one draws from a Poisson distribution that is less than mu, okay, and vice versa. So now we're gonna, that will induce negative correlation, okay. So uh, let's just run this. Oops, run this. Okay, and so we see the, the mean from both of these random variables as well as their variances, okay. And in both cases, you notice that, again, the variance is greater than the mean, 
And because the mean is supposed to be equal to the variance with Poisson uh, random variables, we have an over-dispersed random variable here, or at least you know, over-dispersed relative to a Poisson distribution. Okay. Um, so now what about uh, an under-dispersed type of... Uh, uh, what about an under-dispersed uh, under random variable? Okay. Well, we can, we can also get this um, if there is some process that is drawing successive observations closer to some anchor value, like the mean, okay? And so we'll, we'll go through that here, but, uh, but a real world example of this might be, I mean, this is not a great one, but maybe the number of meals you eat per day, okay? So maybe it's three, three, uh, and then you have a holiday, and so you have to sneak in somehow two dinners or something, so now you have four, but now you've overeaten so much that the next day you have one or two, okay? In other words, it's it's dragging everything back towards some value, okay? I guess it's not a great example because if you're under eating the next day, but anyway, uh, you can you know you can fill in the blanks there to make that story work, I suppose. But so what we're going to do? Um, so again, we're going to just label this uh, random variable and we're going to fill it in. So right now we just have a vector that has nothing in it; it just has a thousand empty spaces. We're going to assign the first value of that. A value of mu which we defined up here okay so it's a Poisson distribution that has a mean of mu and a variance of mu okay and now if we are over so if our previous observation is over mu then we are going to take the max value from either Poisson here or Poisson here between two different Poisson variables okay um, and so what this is going to do is it's going to so for over mu we're going to pick the max of of a of a Poisson distribution with a mean less than mu or a mean of mu. Okay, and then similarly, if uh, if the previous value is less than mu, then we're going to draw from two different Poisson distributions. But now, um, but now we have a, a slight a slightly different mean for for one of the Poissons. So um, you can work this out and see how it works. Um, but anyway, the, the, again, the idea is that we're dragging successive values back to the mean, okay? Um, and uh, and so now we look at the, the mean and the variance. So now we have a mean of, you know, about 5.6, okay? But now the variance is less than the mean, all right? And so we are under-dispersed relative to Poisson distributions. Okay, we'll call that good.